If you ever wanted your D&D game to take to the skies, this video is for you. With sky ships, cloud cities, and gas giants, by the end of this video, you will feel confident in implementing this unique genre of fantasy into your TTRPG setting. After all, the sky's the limit. Hello, Acolytes. Welcome to the Cleric Corner. My name is Riker, and here we talk about all things Dungeons and Dragons, tapping into our higher powers to create worlds more unique and stories more impactful. But first, our sponsor for today's video, Eats' Guide to Dragon Bonding by Dragon Bond Endless Sagas. This 300-page volume includes exciting new dragon-focused content to enhance your 5e games. Discover the thrill of adventuring with a fully realized dragon in your party, one that grows with your characters in size and power, including dragon-related subclasses, races, and brand new classes of Dragon Hunter, Dragon Herald, and Vala Adept. Find rules for full-on aerial dragon combat Combats, creating draconic magic items, experimenting with draconic rune magic, exploring six visually and mechanically stunning dragon broods, and so, 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 so much more. The Kickstarter ends soon, so back it fast. Bond with the dragon and own the skies today. Link in the description below. Sky punk is actually pretty rare when it comes to clear explanations of what makes it different than genres like steampunk, but in the sky, or solar punk with extra steps but today I hope to make the distinction clear. I will go over themes, threats, and makeup of the world, the aesthetics and mechanics of your characters within this genre, and other inspiration sources that you can find for this game. So, here we go. To put simply, sky punk is anything to do with being in the sky. I know, go figure. But there can be a little bit more nuance. There are sky punks where the setting takes place high in the clouds, but the ground is still there and can be visited. Then there are sky punks where there is nothing but sky and no ground whatsoever. Great for adventures set in the elemental plane of air or a gas giant in Spelljammer. It is often coined by its airships and floating cities, floating by hot air itself, which is more common, leaning into more of the steampunk aesthetics or by magical means like electric rays or anti-gravity crystals. You can also find zeppelins, jetpacks, airborne rail systems, and weather machines. One of the earliest depictions of sky punk was the city Lupunta in the novel Gulliver's Travels. This city was suspended through the use of artificial magnetism and it was considered quite the imaginative stretch for those of that time. In the 1960s, architects by the name of Buckminster Fuller and Soji Sodoa, if I pronounce those right, they proposed spherical thermal airships that became airborne when the internal air was heated, much like hot air balloons. As long as the temperature inside the sphere was warmer than outside of it, it should float. So all I'm asking is where are these giant balloon cities? Well, sadly, according to their calculation, we still have about 9,920 years of technology to go. So I'm gunning for us to work out immortality first. But later, other scientists proposed similar designs that were claimed to allow us to live on other planets with much too hot surfaces like Venus and much larger gas planets. So even in a low magic setting, sky punk is not off limits, and there are plenty of dangers and risks that come with it. Players in a skypunk D&D setting might have things to deal with such as defective breathing apparatuses, sky settlements, and resource gathering of sulfur or hydrogen to make sure atmospheric balance is consistent, or falling from these heights as well. If you're on a gas planet, acid rain or diamond storms could become an issue, but of course there's also the question of, is your elemental plane of air like the air on Earth, or is it like the air on other planets? Weather perhaps can be the most hazardous in high altitudes, causing issues from hurricanes to thunderstorms. So if you plan to create a campaign with many weather hazards or just want to be more creative with it, check out this 26-page supplement, Higher Powers Climate Control. Me and my team have compiled ideas and resources for weather-based characters, encounters, and combats, and expanding your mind when it comes to magical weather, with things like blood, emotion, and schools of magic. Get a copy on my website or get this issue and last month issue free if you become a patron supporter of the channel. This helps me continue to make videos like this one. So if you want to and are able, check out the links in the description. But let's get back to it. 
From the time of its conception, there has always been something attractive about Skypunk, especially once the Industrial Revolution came and people yearned for cleaner air and freedom from the airborne diseases. People saw Skypunk as an escape, which evolved its punkiness. From what I can tell, while Solar Punk is an exploration of technology, government, and nature coming together for the betterment of the environment, Skypunk is a complete freedom from that worry. A freedom of self. It is an escape and often leans to the ideas of exploration and wonder. Quite literally not bound by the gravity of responsibility and authority, though you may still have to fight for it. Steampunk is often mixed in with Skypunk, which is why raw Skypunk is very hard to find. But in those instances, it becomes more of a rebellion against tyrannical government, and the aesthetic is more 1800s Victorian England. But the great thing about Skypunk is that it too can be mixed with many other genres for unique settings. Have your sky ships and sky cities run solely on fossil fuels for more of a diesel punk aesthetic, or have them literally be lifted up by pterodactyls in a more stone punk setting, powered by clean energy like solar and wind power for a solar punk setting, or have the city be a living and flying creature itself in a biopunk setting. But those are whole other videos that you can check out on my punk genre playlist at the end of the video. But now let's talk about the people and characters within a sky punk setting. We're talking characters inspired by weather systems, hot air balloons, aeronauts, or Icarus with his waxed wings. We get to fly high with flavor here and sky related subclasses. Starting with the artillerist artificer, you might find a character that harnesses the power of the weather in contraptions, capturing lightning in a bottle or powering engines with wind turbines. You then have characters that channel that magic more within themselves with the storm herald barbarian, with the desert sea or snowy storms. In a sky setting, it might also be important to get a flight speed when you can. So being a totem warrior barbarian and choosing the eagle totem at high levels will help you do that. But there isn't a lot of weather or sky related magics with the bard subclasses. So College of Glamour might be fun depicting outfits that resemble different weather types. In contrast, there are many subclasses to choose from with the next couple subclasses. The Tempest Domain Cleric will be an obvious one. And if you have been watching this channel for long, you know that I have been currently playing a Sky Domain Cleric in my games, and I put it on my website, so if you want to try that out as well, you can check it out there. For Druids, we have the Circle of Stars that also gives you a flying speed and perfect for your Night Flyers, as well as the Circle of Land, where instead of the land, you can flavor each terrain as the weather in different areas of climate. But then in our magazine I mentioned earlier, you could also channel the weather and environmental effects directly with the Circle of Climate Druid. For fighters, I'm thinking Rune Knight Fighter might fit with the Storm Runes, channeling the magic from Storm Giants, or it could be a really cool Cavalier with a flying mount. Monks have a good elemental and flying option with the Ascendant Dragon Monk, either keep the dragon aesthetic or turn it more towards channeling the climate. And then you also have the four elements monk that you can experiment with if you wanted to keep the elemental aspect. And if you wanted a flying speed for the paladin, you could grab the Oath of Vengeance. Or if you wanted to lean into the freedom of the clouds, pick the Oath of the Open Sea Paladin by Matthew Mercer. And your water comes from the clouds or you replace the waves feature with the winds. If you're looking for a ranger subclass, the Swarm Keeper would do well with birds, insects, and other flying creatures or a Drake Warden with eventually having your own flying dragon mount. Rogue was a little harder, but the Phantom Rogue will give you a flight speed, and if you are traveling across the skies in a sailing ship, a Swashbuckler might fit really well. Sorcerers, weirdly, have a lot of flying speeds in their subclasses, but be a Divine Soul Sorcerer channeling the Radiance of Clear Weather, Storm Sorcery for Bad Weather, or Draconic Bloodline for everything in between. For Warlocks, we can again lean into Elemental Power as different weather types and get a flying speed with the Genie subclass, or again, take water from the clouds with a Fathomless Warlock. In the subclass, you get to teleport between bodies of water and, hey, might be fun to consider a cloud a body of water. And finally, for wizards, the best option might be Transmutation Wizard to cast Fly, a transmutation spell, on other allies. And again, not a two weather themed class, but we also fix that in the magazine with a weather magic wizard, imbuing your spells and area effects with the extremes of weather. Now we don't have many flying races in D&D, but if you wanted to pick up a different subclass and still don't find falling a dozen miles to your death a fun time, find solace in the Era 
Copra, the Owlin from Strixhaven, the Half Angel Asimar, the Fairy, or even Glide like a Flying Squirrel with the Ape Brace Hadzi or Simic Hybrid from Ravnica. Otherwise, some other spells you might want to pick up are Featherfall and Levitate as a spellcaster or just take the Magic Initiate feat. Or just for aesthetic reasons, get any weather related spells like Skyrite, Gust, Storm of Vengeance, Fog Cloud, Weather Control, Control Winds, Zephyr Strike, Gust of Wind, Steel Wind Strike, A Messenger of Wind, Windwalk, Windwall, or Warding Wind. <sighs> Losing my wind there. <laughs> But to further a skypunk aesthetic for backgrounds you may choose for your character might be the Astral Drifter, a Spelljammer Wanderer background, a City Watch from one of the many possible sky cities, Far Travel since travel and exploration might be prevalent in your campaign, Guild Merchant because trades between factions are easily done by air and included in many skypunk settings, Hermit and Outlander for a similar reason to Far Traveler, the Pirate, Sailor, and Shipwright backgrounds for the flying ships of course, Smuggler for the darker side of the trade goods, and then both Urban Bounty Hunter and Urchin would make both an interesting take on the floating settlements. Next you want to think about feats. Elemental Adept and Gift of the Chromatic Dragon will help you with elemental damage if you relate them to the weather. Gift of the Gem Dragon has a Telekinetic Shove feature that you can reflavor as the Gust of Wind, so of course the Telekinetic Feat would also work. And with all of that freedom and open air up there, Keen Might might be a good pickup. Use Mobile to empower your movement, again reflavored as wind magic, but these are really for a few of the many aesthetics in Skypunk. And again, can be either high or low magic. What backgrounds or feats could you see fitting? But inspiration doesn't stop there as we look for outside resources to help us. Either take ideas from these kinds of media or copy them whole cloth. Here we find examples of Skypunk in movies like Castle in the Sky, The Aeronauts, some elements in Mortal Engines, Last Exile, The Air Nomads from Avatar, and the spin-off series of Critical Role, Exandria Unlimited Calamity. Video games also have an influence with Worlds Adrift, Black Skylands, Guns of Icarus, or Bioshock Infinite for more of a steampunk aesthetic, Aeroborn Kingdom, AER Memories of Old, Weirdly Sonic Riders, and Zelda Skyward Sword. Some books and literature might include, of course, Gulliver's Travels, Children of the Flying City, The Aeronauts Windlass, Winds of Calicovo, The Airborne Series, Cities in Flight, or Library of the Sapphire Wind. Either read through and enjoy the stories, or read the synopsises to inspire your own character building or campaign creation. But like many of the other punk videos that I've done, I'm sure there will be a couple comments saying, this isn't D&D, you should instead play a different TTRPG. And while I will always disagree, you yourself might find exploration of other games really exciting. So along the lines of purely Skypunk TTRPGs, we have Swashbucklers of the Seven Skies, and then both Skycrawl and Upwind on drive through RPG. If you want fleshed out guidance in D&D for a Skypunk setting, the creators of Dragonlance just did a Kickstarter for Sky Raiders of Abrax, not sponsored. But I assume once the Kickstarter is over, it should be available for everyone, but don't take my word for it. So tell me, with all of this Skypunk talk, is there anything that I missed? Any piece of media that you feel I should have mentioned? Make sure to comment below and then watch my other punk explorations in this playlist up here. But in the meantime, go out there and spread the good word of D&D and make the world a better place, both on and off the table. See you in the next one.